Can you see me? Is it too dark? Let's turn on a light. That's better. Now you can see me. You couldn't see me before because there wasn't enough light. Now there's enough light. Much like this celery growing behind me. There's not enough light. Best segue ever, by the way. This celery is growing under a T5 light fixture from which five of the eight bulbs have burned out. It is a... They are two foot, 24 watt, 6500 Kelvin, high output T5 bulbs. It's hard to say. 20, 24 inch high output, 24 watt, 6500 Kelvin, high output T5 bulbs. Anyway, five of them have burned out. I've had this in continuous service for about two years now, and the light bulbs are starting to go. I have grown under this fixture lettuce, uh, radishes, tomatoes, spinach, lots of things over the course of his lifetime. And now I am growing hydroponic celery. It's pink celery. Look at that. I had to get this stuff. When I saw these seeds, I'm like, dude, it is pink. Not only is it pink, it smells and tastes just like regular celery. Probably better cut that part off. It's growing in coconut core in the little pots, and I put the water and the nutrients in this thing, and, fill, and it just kind of swims in there, and it's been doing great all summer long. I also have a plate of dirt over here that I put them on when I take it upstairs. And as always, we have the elephant for scale, so you can see how big these plants are. From what I understand, the Chinese use this particular celery for flavorings in soups and other things like that. It's not meant to just be eaten like you eat your traditional celery. And I don't know about the rest of the world, but in America, People like to put peanut butter in their celery. I don't know, is that a thing in your country? Leave a comment below. Do you put peanut butter on your celery? This, I don't think I'm gonna be able to put any peanut butter on because there's no little thing, you know, like celery has. But it smells and tastes just like regular celery. And it's pink, it's pink. <clears throat> Suffice it to say, it's not doing as well as it used to be. You can kind of see it drooping, not because I bit this one, but otherwise drooping doesn't have enough light anymore. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace two of them with 2000 Kelvin bulbs. That's a warmer, that's on the warmer end of the spectrum. The warmer end of the spectrum is used for blooming things. So if you want fruit or peppers or tomatoes or anything worth a blossom and you're growing it for the fruit, warmer end of the spectrum. Cooler end of the spectrum, 6500 Kelvin, 5500 Kelvin, this side, is where you get your vegetative growth. You want your lettuce, your spinach, anything you're growing for the leaves, celery, in the vegetative section. I don't really want this to go to seed. I don't want it to blossom. I don't want it to bolt. I just want the leaves and the stems. So cool lights. But it's not really as versatile as I would like. Last year I grew tomatoes under this light and they did fine. They probably would have done better had I had a warmer spectrum to provide those plants when I was growing the tomatoes. But they did okay. The reason why I'm gonna replace two of the bulbs with the warmer lights, 2000 Kelvin, is because I want more of a full spectrum light. But I still want it to be on the cooler end. I grow mostly greens and stuff downstairs in my basement. Right now my tomatoes are growing outside, my peppers are outside, they're doing amazing. But should I want to grow something inside in the winter time, uh, I just want the option. I want a little better light for that purpose. And granted, I could take, I could buy multiple lights and change them out as the time comes, but eh, I don't really want to do that. Um, so, why did I buy a T5 fixture? If there is one question that anybody growing indoors asks themselves, especially if they're coming to YouTube for information, they ask themselves, how much light do I need? What kind of light should I get? And I can't answer that for you. I can't tell you what you should do. I can only tell you why I did what I did and why I bought what I, why, why I bought what I bought. You with me? Um, why, I have a T5 fixture. I have a T8 shop light and a T12 shop light. And there, I used the brightest, bluest bulbs I could find because I was growing mostly lettuce. Just As I was just starting out, shop lights. And they were great. They're not very bright. Lettuce doesn't require a ton of light. You don't need the super bright LEDs to grow lettuce. In fact, you don't even need this much light to grow lettuce. Um, and they did great. But as I kind of grew and I kind of got more experienced, I wanted to grow different things. I needed a brighter light. And that's where I grew. I got this. I could grow the tomatoes. I, can grow, I grew radishes. I can grow other things that require much more light than lettuce. So why did I buy a T5 fixture if there's so many probably better, maybe better options out there? Well, if you've looked on Amazon, there is a million and 50 lights. Like if you search for indoor grow lights, there's a million and 50. Some things there's a lot of, there's like a, you say there's a million and one of those. Of lights, there are a million and 50, which is more 
than a million and one. And there's just so many different kinds. There's the kind that grow just the red and the blue spectrum, and you can shift between them to so switch from vegetative to blooming. There's the full spectrum. There's the $35, you know, 10 watt things. There's the $900 ones. And I can tell you what, I'm not going to pay $900 for an LED light to grow lettuce and radishes and tomatoes in my basement. Some people are buying those $900 LEDs, but they're not growing lettuce or radishes or tomatoes. I can assure you, if they are, that better be the best freaking lettuce you've ever eaten. 900 bucks. Sheesh. There's, this, there's just this huge spectrum of prices, and, and you're like, what the heck is the difference between these things? I just want to grow this. Tell me what I should buy. Well, that's why I bought the T5 Lite. It's tried, and it's true, and people have been using it for years, and it just works. Like, it just worked. I knew it would just work. I knew I wouldn't be disappointed with it. I knew I wouldn't get it and go, oh, this... 100 watt equivalent LED actually only draws 50 watts because they lied and they got fake reviews on Amazon or whatever. Um, I just knew this would just work and it does. It works great. But now the bulbs have burned down. It's time to replace them. So I could replace the whole fixture with an LED light, but it'd probably be cheaper to just buy the bulbs unless LEDs have come down drastically in price. Um, I'm going to go to the local hardware store and I'm going to look and see what's available there. And I'm probably going to buy them online because I'm pretty sure they don't have the high output bulbs at Home Depot or Walmart or the light bulbs, local light bulb store. What you want, if you are buying your own bulbs, what you want to look for, if you want to bloom things, warmer end of the spectrum, 2000, 3000 Kelvin. If you want to grow vegetatively, cooler end of the spectrum, 5500, 6500 Kelvin. And you can usually find that written on the box or on the bulb. And the wattage is important too, especially for these, the T5, the T5 bulbs, look at that rolling shutter. Um, for the T5 bulbs, when you get into LEDs, the wattage becomes confusing. You, like, you have to have different ways to measure things. They've got the micromoles, they've got the lumens, they've got all these different things that plants need. Lumens aren't really helpful for those kind of lights. But for these kind, that's kind of how they are. I mean, they're just measured, like, the brightest, the brighter the light, the higher the lumens. And that's just how the fluorescent bulbs are measured. Um, they also, I'm sure, have the micromoles and whatever else, but... The higher the wattage, 24 watts are the high output bulbs, which produce the most light for your plants. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace these bulbs, two warm bulbs, six cool bulbs, and I'm going to get this spinach up and, or I'm going to get this celery up and humming again. I'm going to get this thing growing through the roof. But I want to know what you are going to do. Like, what lights do you have? Do you have LED lights? Do you like them? Do they work well? Put that in the comments down below, and maybe we can help each other sift through this massive sea of lighting information that you can't make, you can't tell what's what. You don't even know what's true. Um, yeah, put that in the comments to, below. Maybe we can help each other. So let's wrap this thing up. That's enough rambling. If you're a new grower, or if you're looking to upgrade your lights, or buy new lights, and you're asking yourself, what do I really need? How much light do I really need to grow? Blah. That's the key to the question. What are you growing? Are you growing lettuce, greens, herbs, mint, parsley, catnip, whatever, you don't need a ton of light for that. A T5 fixture will work great. Shop lights will work great for growing lettuce. They're 20 bucks. You can have amazing results and success just with simple shop lights. If you're growing peppers or tomatoes or other fruiting plants, eggplant, whatever, um, you're going to need brighter lights. Again, T5 lights work great. You can get brighter lights up from there. You can get the sodium, the high pressure sodium and the, and the metal halide and all those things that generate tons of heat. You get the bright LEDs. I don't have any experience with the LEDs. That's where you come in. Comments below. But um, yeah, you can just have great success with cheap lights. Don't feel like you've got to get the most expensive $900 LED just to grow radishes and lettuce and tomatoes. I really do appreciate all the thumbs ups and the comments and the subscribers and the conversation we have down below. It really is good stuff. So go ahead. Let's talk about lights, hydroponics, Jeb Gardner, life in general, whatever you like. If this was helpful for you, helpful to you, share it with a friend. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, like Gerald Undone says, give it a thumbs down twice. And I will thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. Front. Looking good. Those things. Cactus. Ooh. Lights. Smashed box. Probably a good sign. Take those inside. With one hand.
Do that. Cool. Warm. Cool, 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 cool. Warm. I went out of town for a week and I came back, they looked like this. They didn't have enough water. I thought they had enough water, they didn't have enough water. So maybe I'll cut these off like this. And maybe these will go back on top like this. But an entire summer's worth of work. Dead. The elephant is still strong though. Still good. He never forgets.